What's up guys and welcome back to Texas Young Guns to this unusual midweek update from us. Uh, if you follow our channel, you're one of our loyal followers. First of all, thank you. Um, but you know that putting out a midweek video like this is highly unusual from us. Normally we produce videos every Sunday to you guys. Um, and that's because we've had a little bit of a mishap. If you are loyal to us and you know about a year ago, actually almost to the day, um, from today, last year, this is about the time, pre-COVID that is, um, that we received the news that our first RV, Stella, um, was going to be totaled. Uh, we, we had an electrical fire on that motorhome. Um, we were shocked, shock and awe to hear that they were going to total it. Um, and we lost that motorhome. Took the wind completely out of our sails. Um, and so this year, we're hoping for that 2021, right? You know, that, that beautiful year after the COVID year that will always be known as 2020. Well, it, it's not starting off too great for us. So Lana and I really wanted to start the trip off right and head to Hot Springs, Arkansas to transition from 2020 to 2021. Um, by the way, we are putting those videos out right now. Um, I put out the first one already, as you saw last weekend, so make sure you follow that series. It's a good one. Anyways, we were on our way up there, and I got a low coolant alarm. And just so you know, it was pouring down rain. Of course it was, right? So we stopped at the truck stop, and sure enough, I checked the radiator. Um, of course, you have to take the closet floor out to get to it, but I did it. Um, and in the pouring rain, filled her up. Sure enough, it was a little bit low. Didn't think too much of it. Because um, we have driven Blue Bonnet for probably eight, ten thousand 10,000 miles by now um, with no issues. Um, not one coolant alarm. So we filled it up. And sure enough, the alarm went away. So we were good. Um, we got to Hot Springs with no issue. Enjoyed the trip. Um, of course, we have some heater issues, but that's neither here nor there um, and we're on our way back from hot springs back home and that's when trouble started um, we started getting check engine lights um, but this time around it wasn't telling me what it was about uh, so it just told me check engine because um, on ours we have a little info screen that will tell you what the code is unfortunately this one just said check engine so really no idea um, knowing that we had gone low on coolant on the way up, that was the first thing I checked. But nope, coolant was still full. But I did notice while I was in the back checking the coolant that we have white smoke coming out of what is called a crankcase vent. So in the crankcase where oil lives and is passed through, it lubricates the engine and that kind of thing. Um, basically, it's an area of the engine where only oil should be. Um, so if you know nothing about engines, just know that it's an area where the oil is um, and it vents that oil. It's kind of an old school system um, that they were still using on motorhomes up until recently. Um, just so you know, my 54 Chevy truck has a crate and case vent, um, which they stopped using about in the 50s. But RVs are still using them to this day um, or have recently stopped. So that just shows you how old that, that kind of setup is. Anyways, you don't have to know a lot about engines to know that coolant should not be where oil is and vice versa. Just like fuel should not be where either one of those two are and vice versa. Well, we had coolant coming out of that crankcase vent. Um, so at this point, Blue Bonnet, our motorhome, is sitting at Rush Truck Stop. When you have coolant coming out of where oil should be, or vice versa, or any one of those three liquids mixing together when they're not supposed to be, and well, I guess they never are, that's always a very bad sign. We will be lucky at this point to get out of it with a head gasket change. Um, maybe uh, there is an air compressor that utilizes coolant. Um, there is an EGR cooler that utilizes coolant. If it's one of those things, we will be blessed. Um, we probably will not get out of this scenario, even if it's best case scenario for cheap. Um, I'm guessing that this little fiasco is going to cost us a couple thousand at least. That's just a rough guess. Um, could cost a lot more. Worst case scenario, we're looking at an overhaul and that is bad. So 
Um, at this point, like I said, Blue Bonnet is currently at Rush Truck Centers in Beaumont. Um, they are taking a look at it um, and they will let us know as soon as they can look at it. You know, this is one of the dangers in buying used motorhomes. Um, you know, you, you go on these trips and have a blast and you have these breakdowns, but that's kind of the game you play. Lana and I knew that when you invest in an older motorhome that has some miles, has some use, um, this is the possibility. So um, this was kind of built into our calculations with buying the motorhome. It's just unfortunate that <laughs> a year later, uh, you know, it's happening to us again. So uh, I guess this, the severity of whatever comes out of this, whatever they find, um, you know, we'll either take the wind of our sails or we can keep going down the road with you guys. So just wanted to give you a quick update. Um, if you follow our Instagram or our Facebook, you already know that we've been having issues. So if you want to follow us, um, not just for this, but for our trips and pictures and videos, make sure you go and follow those, um, those specific social medias on Facebook and Instagram. Um, and of course I will update you guys as we get updates, um, on this YouTube channel. So guys, appreciate you joining us and we'll see you on the next one. Bye guys.